Metaphysical Soul Speak with your host, Elena Fox Starks. Metaphysical Soul Speak is a spiritual show that explores the mysteries of the universe and reminds you of your divine connection. So, this is Elena Fox Starks, and I am here with my guest, LaRon Jones. And LaRon Jones and I have known each other, is it going on seven years now? Almost seven years, Elena. Yeah, almost about seven years. Yeah, it really has. It's been a long and amazing journey. Laron Jones is a certified clinical hypnotherapist, and he has a bachelor's degree in metaphysical sciences. He is almost, what are you, two weeks away from your master's degree in metaphysical sciences. He is also, yes, yes. And you're also an ordained minister, and you're getting ready to go to seminary school so that you're going to be very, very (laughs) well-versed in the divine and the metaphysical. (laughs) Yes, that's that's my calling, of course. Yes, definitely. That's awesome. So today what we're going to talk about with Lauren is um, how – Well, everybody knows that it's easy to call upon divine and be grateful to God when your life is going super smooth (laughs) and super amazing and you're loving life and everything is just going your way. You're in the flow. You're in the zone. And suddenly there's a blip on the radar. And for some of us, it's just a little blip. And for some of us, it's more than a blip and it becomes um, a little bit more serious. And... How how do we pull ourselves out of this spiritual crisis? And Laurent has an amazing story that I I admire you so much, Laurent. You have no idea the stuff that you've had to go through, the stuff you have overcome. I have witnessed this journey now for seven years, and I'm so proud of you. And I'm happy that we're friends for so long, and we've seen each other grow. And Um, I think we should jump right into it, Um, the good, the bad, and the ugly, as it were. Um, When you were a child, what what religion were you raised in? Well, first of all, I want to say, Elena, I do appreciate you too as well, and I love you. And I'm just grateful and have just so much gratitude for having you in my life and being there with me through the challenges that you know that I have been able to overcome through the grace of God. But yes, I was born in um, a typical um, Pentecostal and Baptist, so I had a double whammy, um, Orthodox, (laughs) (laughs) fundamentalist, um, Christian family. I had a a mother that was an evangelist and a father that was a bishop. So you can imagine how that was. (laughs) Wow. <laughs> it, absolutely. And, and even your uncle's in the ministry, is that right? Yes, yes. 30 years he's been in the ministry. Well, actually, all of my family. I have cousins and and uncles and and aunties that are evangelists and, and pastors and bishops. And, and yeah, it's, 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 it's within the family, definitely. Okay, so, so you had a calling to be a part of this from an early age, but something held you back. Let's let's hear about that. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, <laughs> that is the truth. Um, you know, Elena, it, I could tell you from a very, very young age, I just remember having this close connection and understanding with God. And, you know, and that's just why how me personally, why I believe that children, bringing them upright with spirituality, it's just so important because we just get it when we're kids. 
we, we just totally get it because we're so, we're innocent. We're pure. We don't have all of the, the, the junk and the crap from the conditioning that we grow up in our society. So, yes, when I first started off, I, I had a very strong relationship with God, and, and I just knew that when I was growing up that I wanted to be of service to God. But, of course, as growing up and going through the developmental stages of, of being a child, growing up into adolescence, I started just hearing just these horrible things about God, how he is a God of wrath and how he's an angry and jealous God, you know? And, yeah, and, and yeah. And he's hell, you know? And I was just like, oh, hell, like, look, this is the God that I have just came in this world just being connected to. What's going on here? So that's when the turn to the dark side happened, if you would say. <laughs> right. It's, it's kind of your disconnect, as it were. And it is with so many people. There's so many people that go through this. You know, I went through this yeah. with the Catholic Church when I was the tender age of Ooh. eight, I told them off. I, I just yeah. said, I don't, you say that I can't talk to God directly? He created me. Why not? Why do I need exactly. to go through a priest? You know, I, I had some issues when I was eight. I mean, I, for me too, I became an ordained minister because my whole life I wished to be close to that love of God, that loving God. And and to hear yeah. about the hell and the negativity, I, I completely relate to you. So, so anyway, this show is um, more about you than me. So I want to know, so what happened? You were afraid of going to hell, and then the fear set in. Yes, yeah, what happened? The, the fear set in, and, you know, it was just growing up from a very young age, having this, connect, this connectedness to God. And feeling this love and then all of a sudden like this poker face side of God where he was just this negative, wrathful God, it, it, it just felt like I just, like you said, I felt disconnected. So that led to a life of um, alcohol abuse and narcotic abuse to get away from the feeling of the pain and the confusion and the not understanding that how can this God create me? but condemn me to this eternal hell, this place. And like you said, I couldn't go to this. I had to go to pastors, and, and they would have to pray for me. So, yeah, it, was, it led to um, many years of, of drinking alcohol and, um, and, and just falling short of the glory of what God had for me. Yes. Wow. Wow. So... So fast forward, obviously you became an alcoholic and it wasn't a pretty thing and, and we don't want to go into the negative parts of it because we all know and love people who've gone through this. But yeah. there was something that when you and I were getting reconnected recently, you told me that there was like a prayer. There was something that you said and God actually took away your cravings, your physical cravings for alcohol and replaced it with this ultimate love. And you have this just enlightenment experience, if you will. Um, what was the prayer? What did you say? Well, you know, Lena, it, it, it got to the point to where it was just so much darkness and emptiness within my life to where, you know, I realized that the alcohol, it wasn't serving me any longer. And I wasn't having fun like I, I used to. And, and now this day, by the grace of God overcoming that, I realized that through the alcohol and drug abuse, yes, it was an escape though, but also that w it, it, it could would give me that feeling where I could be more connected to God, even though me personally, it wasn't, it was false, it was hindering me. But I just, you know, friends, family, everybody was tired of me because I, I, I turned from a happy drunk into a very, <laughs> very mean, um, not happy, miserable um, person. And a lot of my loved ones were not there. And, and I believe that there was even a time, Elena, where you, you didn't even talk to me. Um, yeah. And I just, yeah. And, and, you know, and Elena, I just, I called out. I, I believe that I reference back to what some of the Holy Scriptures, um, and that is of, um, of the Bible. And there's a part where it says that 
cry out, Abba, Father, God, if they cry out, he will come and deliver them. So I just, you know, I was in my room and I just got on my knees and I just cried out. I said, Abba, Father, God, I believe you are there. And then that right there in that instant, Elena, I had the epiphany. And I said, no, I'm, I'm going to change my thinking. I'm going to have a paradigm shift within my consciousness and all the things that I've been brought up that I've been told regurgitated the doctrine over centuries and generations that have been told to me. I said, I don't, I'm not going to no longer listen to that. I'm going to choose to believe that God loves me regardless, no matter what. And, I mean, Elena, from that day on, it was just beautiful because I, I called out to God, and he did. He came and delivered me, and I changed my thinking, and my life has changed. And it's just, it's just amazing that all this time, and I just look back on, on, on that during those times, those dark times, how the grace and the love of God, how he was carrying me the whole time, totally there, you know, arranging everything in the universe um, for my highest good. And, 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 and that was pretty much the epiphany that, that I had. And, as of course, as you know, from then on out, it's been all uphill <laughs> from, from there, you know. Um, yes. Did I, did I answer your question? Yes, that is so awesome. That That is so helpful because, you know, a lot of times when people go through um, rehab or a substance abuse program, um, you know, they're, they're told to remember God, think of God, but they don't include God in the healing. And you did. And you haven't had, <clears throat> you haven't had a drink in, of alcohol. And, and how long has it been now? Oh, my goodness, Elena. It's been two and a half years, and you know what, Elena, it's just so funny because this is actually my second time around getting clean and sober again, and yeah. the first time, yeah. it, it, the, the, the difference from the first time to this time is the first time I got sober, I'm, I mainly did it for really other people, but I mean, I was, I was, I would go places, I couldn't go and hang out in certain places if there were people that were drinking. I couldn't because I, I just, I knew that I would go back. But I mean, Elena, now it, it's just so different because the craving, I, I, I have not had one craving. God has literally, through his grace and his love and his compassion for us, literally has take, t- taken the craving, the taste of alcohol away from me where I can be in social settings with people that are drinking alcohol. Actually, just this past weekend, you know, I was in a situation where there was um, people, it was like kind of like a, a healing circle type, but afterwards there was, you know, a little bit of, of wine or whatnot, and, and it didn't even faze me. So, yes, literally the, the wonderful love and grace of God totally took the cravings and everything away. That's how powerful God, That is so God wonderful. Is. Like, and, and so now you're going into substance abuse counseling. You're getting your education. You're already a hypnotherapist, so you can already help people that have gone through something similar and also from a spiritual perspective. How do people get in touch with you? Do you have a website? Yes, I do have a website, by the way. Um, Yes, everybody out there in in Radio Lab probably want to go ahead and get a a pen and paper um, to write this down because it's pretty long. But, yes, I can be found on www.newbull.com. Optimum Wellness, and I'm going to go ahead and spell that out. That is going to be www. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty long. I told you. But, yes, it's www.nuvo. So that's going to be N as in Nancy, O, U, V as in Victor, E as in Elaine, A as in Apple, U as in Umbrella, and then dash Optimum, O, P, T as in Teddy, I, M as in Mary, U, M as in Mary, dash, wellness, that's W-E-L-L-N-E-S-S dot com. And that's where I can be reached if, if anyone wants to get in contact with me in the greater Los Angeles area. I would love to hear from them. Oh, that's awesome. So, Nouveau 
dash optimum dash wellness dot com. Correct. Oh, that is that is just brilliant. I'm I'm so excited because I know you're going to help so many people in the world and I just I kind of can't wait to hear the stories. I it's just hypnosis, hypnotherapy is one of the greatest miracles that's ever occurred in my life being a hypnotherapist and in my clients' lives and also you too. And it's just the, the ability to serve and put God first and you put the divine connection in your life first and help people. It, it's there's nothing better in my opinion, and I'm, and I'm really grateful that um, you've chosen to take the good path, and we're still friends after all these years, and yes. <laughs> I'm just so grateful. Laurent, thank you for having um, the courage to come on my show and put yourself out there, because it really takes a lot of bravery to put yourself in uh, this position, <laughs> and I'm really grateful yes. for you, so thank you so so much for being on the show with me today. Well, I again, I wanted to thank you. You are just truly a angel of light, and and thank you for considering me to be a part of this wonderful show. So I I want to thank you as well. All right, that's been um, my interview with Lauren Jones at nouveau-optimum-wellness.com. And um, I'll be back in just a moment. Thank you so much for tuning in to Metaphysical Soul Speak. And now it's time for five minutes of therapy for your spiritual success. Because this is my first show, I'm going to first talk to you about beginnings. In the beginning was the word. I am sure that you have heard this before, this phrase. And the first word that has ever been spoken in this world was spoken by God, the divine, the universe, whatever your name is for your higher, your version of your higher power. The word was logos. Logos is logic, it's divine intelligence, and it is perfect. When you first come into this world and you are born, you are born without the ability to speak. And your parents speak to you, and they speak for you. And eventually, you utter your first word, and then you utter a bunch of words. And as you grow up, what happens is you tend to not only use your own words, but you take on the words of others, and you tell yourself stories. Some of the stories are amazing or are wonderful. I'm going to be a good writer. I'm going to be an actress someday. I'm going to go into my father's business. I'm going to be happy. I'm going to have the love of my life. Some of the words that you tell yourself aren't so wonderful, as a matter of fact. Some of those words are, I don't like the way my butt looks in these jeans. Or, boy, if only my stomach wasn't so big. Or, wow, I'm not as beautiful as she is. And these are words that while they're negative, they're still powerful. You see, the divine created you in such a way that you are made in the image of your creator. But how you shape yourself, your body, your mind, your spirit, your emotional state, you shape it with your words. Okay, so... If you were to take a step back, take a deep breath, go ahead, take a deep breath right now. <sighs> Let it all out. Think about the stories you've been telling yourself 
What have you been buying? What have you been selling? What have you been telling other people? What have you tried to get other people to buy? How is your world being shaped every single day by your words? What I'd like for you to do, if you don't mind having some homework between now and next week when we have another episode of Metaphysical Soul Speak, what I'd like for you to do is write down some of those stories that are not any longer serving you because you are a special, beautiful child of the Creator, of the Divine. You are a child in this universe and your job is to play and be happy and learn and grow. So we're going to grow you a little bit this week if you're willing to go on this journey with me. Okay, so go ahead and write down this week five things that you don't like that you've been telling yourself. And on a new sheet of paper, write down five things that you would like to change about yourself. And these new things could be anything from, I am a success. I am beautiful. I am intelligent. I love my life. I am healthy. I am happy. I find the happiness in all things. I see beauty and joy everywhere I walk. I see the good in everything that I see. <laughs> My world is perfect. My life is perfect. Even if it's unfinished, <laughs> even if you're middle in the middle of a project, even if you're not complete, because we can never be complete in this world. This is a world of learning. The earth is a place for growth. <laughs> and it's a place for ultimate happiness. So this is what I wish for you, my new friend, that always you will have the joy and happiness that you seek. <laughs> and that is it. That is your five minutes of spiritual therapy for your spiritual success. Thank you. Have a wonderful week. Metaphysical Soul Speak is brought to you by ilovehypnosis.com, where you can change your life in just a month using the power of hypnotherapy. You have been listening to the very first episode of Metaphysical Soul Speak, and I wanted to thank you for starting this journey with me. I hope to have um, you as a listener for a very long time. We will be hopefully doing this for many, many years to come. I'd also like to thank my guest, Laron Jones, and his amazing, powerful story and how he was able to put divine first and really change his life. And, you know, that's what this show is really, truly about. We are um, all in the same boat together, on the same planet, and traveling through life together. And we have one creator, no matter what we call it, him, her, whatever we call this higher power and this higher being. And it's just interesting to me, this journey and all the journeys that people go on and how they're very similar, our stories. And I hope you enjoyed my guest as much as I enjoyed having him here. And I hope you enjoyed the five minutes of therapy for your spiritual success. That is a segment that I plan to have with every show, a little five-minute break, five to seven-minute break for you. And um, I want to mention right now I am in Nevada in the middle of a marsh woodlands area just on the other side of the South Lake Tahoe Forest. And occasionally you can hear a, a duck or a goose and once in a while a coyote in the background while I'm recording this. And this has been <coughs> a very spiritual um, place to start this show. And energy is important to me, as I am sure it is for you too. Um, you feel different when you're in different places. And um, that might be something, actually, might be a topic for a show upcoming. And over the next few weeks, um, I am trying to get some native elders um, to come in and talk. 
and my son next week will be my guest next week will be my son Virgil Starks he's 10 years old he has a lot of um, metaphysical ideas and some past life memories and he wants to talk on a few different subjects um, including the new Pope we are no longer Catholic but we um, have some thoughts on this and how wonderful the world is and how it just changes and from lifetime to lifetime and even over the course of the last few years it's really been a huge shift for everybody we know and we're really happy to um, and, and fortunate we're actually feeling very very fortunate to have met Raven Blair Davis who has given us the opportunity to have our radio show on the amazing women of power premier world's premier all positive radio programming network can you imagine what an amazing lady she is I wanted to say a quick shout out to Raven thank you for letting us um, have this opportunity and for sharing our voices in the sea of so many amazing women and amazing men of power so um, yeah thank you so much for being here and we look forward to you next week. I did just get confirmation from Angel Rose and Ahonu. They're, they will be here um, on my show coming up in the next, uh, probably in three weeks. And they have the ability to read the Akashic Records. And I'm still trying to put together what that show will be about. I know it's going to be amazing. Um, I've never heard a show like theirs. They have their own radio show. It's amazing. They will be a guest on Metaphysical Soul Speak. And it's going to be a treat for you. And if you have any ideas or suggestions or comments you'd like to make, suggestions for improvement, <laughs> this is my first show. Um, the geese have a lot to say. I hope you can hear them. <laughs> um, please go to my website at soulspeakradio.com. And put your name and comment in that first page there and let me know what you think. And give me suggestions for show ideas. What do you want to hear about? What do you want to know? Because even though this is my show, this is really your show and I'm here for you. I am doing this for you because I, I just, it's, I have to. I have to. I have a big heart and I'm here to help as many people as I can on this planet as, <laughs> while I'm here. So while you have me here, let me know what you want. And I will try to accommodate you to the best of my ability. Thank you so much for listening to Metaphysical Soul Speak. And we will see you next week. Thank you. Mm -hmm.